NASA rejected SpaceX's most brilliant moon landing idea. Here's why. What if I told you that SpaceX once proposed landing Starship on the moon with absolutely no landing legs? Not hidden legs. Not retractable legs. None. A spacecraft the size of a building, 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide, touching down on another world flat on its reinforced belly. No backup system. No safety net. Just pure engineering confidence taken to an extreme that even NASA found uncomfortable. For more than 60 years of lunar exploration, one design rule has remained untouchable. Every single lander must have legs. From the Soviet Union's Luna 9 in 1966, to the American Apollo missions, to Chang'e, to India's Chandrayaan landers, and even the Odysseus mission in 2024, every spacecraft that has ever touched the moon's unpredictable surface relied on landing legs. They spread weight, stabilize the vehicle, and keep it upright on uncertain terrain. Legs are as fundamental to lunar landers as wings are to airplanes. But SpaceX wanted to rewrite that rule. Their proposal wasn't driven by style or aesthetics. It came from a brutally efficient engineering mindset. Eliminate everything that isn't absolutely necessary. If a component doesn't exist, it can't fail. And in SpaceX's view, landing legs were complicated, heavy, and full of potential failure points. They wanted to get rid of them entirely. In April 2021, when SpaceX won NASA's $2.9 billion human landing system contract, they submitted one of the boldest vehicle concepts ever proposed for human spaceflight. Their design featured a legless starship that would land directly on its steel base. No hydraulics, no actuators, no folding mechanisms. Instead, the entire lower hull would serve as the landing structure. The base of the spacecraft would be strengthened with an 8 mm thick titanium ring. Below that, a crushable skirt made from 3D printed aluminum foam would act as a shock absorber. It was designed to deform on impact, absorbing up to 70% of the landing force. During the final 10 seconds of descent, Starship's six Raptor engines would throttle down to just 5 to 8% of their maximum thrust, slowing the vehicle to under 1 meter per second. That's slower than a person walking. To SpaceX engineers, this wasn't reckless, it was elegant. Landing legs weigh several tons and consist of hundreds of components, hinges, actuators, sensors, microcontrollers, pistons, mounting hardware. Getting rid of them could remove eight to 10 tons of mass, and every kilogram saved translates into more cargo delivered to the lunar surface. In fact, the legless version of Starship could carry roughly seven additional tons of supplies, enough to extend an astronaut's lunar stay by several days. But eliminating legs created a massive challenge. The moon's regolith is not just soft, it is inconsistent. Some areas are compacted like concrete, others are so powdery they can swallow objects a meter deep. How do you land a skyscraper-sized spacecraft on a surface you cannot trust? SpaceX proposed a solution called Plume Surface Interaction. Roughly 30 seconds before touchdown, a ring of specialized gas thrusters would fire outward at 45 degrees. These thrusters would blow away loose dust and compact the soil beneath, forming a hardened surface layer about 20 to 30 centimeters thick. It would act as a temporary landing pad strong enough to support Starship's weight and even flatten slopes of up to 10 degrees. If the system worked, it would be one of the most elegant and futuristic surface preparation techniques ever attempted on another world. But SpaceX was not done. They explored an idea even more radical, landing Starship horizontally. In this concept, Starship would descend vertically as usual, but in the last moments before touchdown, reaction control thrusters would rotate the vehicle to a 30-degree horizontal angle. It would perform a controlled belly landing, impacting on a massive composite pad that absorbed the force. Once on the ground, four autonomous anchors would deploy into the lunar soil to hold the spacecraft firmly in place. This horizontal orientation offered surprising benefits. It dramatically lowered the center of gravity, making the vehicle far harder to tip over. It also spread the mass across a huge area, around 160 square meters, reducing surface pressure by more than 10 times compared to a vertical landing. And best of all, 
Astronauts would not need a 30-meter elevator to reach the surface. They could simply walk down a 3-meter staircase. The belly of the spacecraft, with over 100 cubic meters of internal volume, could serve as an instant surface habitat, larger than the entire pressurized volume of the International Space Station. Now, if this kind of deep dive into real aerospace engineering fascinates you as much as it does me, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We are building toward 150,000 subscribers, and honestly, your support is what makes videos like this possible. Let us keep exploring these incredible ideas together. But here's what NASA saw that SpaceX's engineers did not want to admit. The first issue was structural. Starship was designed to fly vertically, not to lie on its side on another world. Tilting a 50-meter steel cylinder creates enormous bending stresses that the airframe was never designed to handle. And inside the vehicle, large volumes of cryogenic fuel could slosh unpredictably in the moon's low gravity, shifting the center of mass in ways that might destabilize the vehicle both during landing and afterward. The second problem was deceptively simple. Once Starship was horizontal, how would it stand back up? On Earth, lifting a 1,200-ton vehicle requires cranes and heavy machinery. On the Moon, the challenge becomes nearly impossible. If the spacecraft cannot be raised, then it cannot take off again. A horizontal landing essentially meant a one-way mission unless a massive lunar lifting system was developed, adding weight and complexity that defeated the entire purpose. Then there was the toppling risk. With landing legs, multiple contact points spread the load. If one leg sinks deeper than the others, the vehicle can still adjust and remain upright. But with a flat base, any unevenness in the terrain becomes catastrophic. If one side of the spacecraft sank even a single meter deeper than the other, the resulting tilt, around 25 degrees, would cause the entire vehicle to topple. Imagine trying to stand a refrigerator upright on a beach. If even one corner sinks a little deeper, the whole thing goes over instantly. Next came the problem of engine exhaust. Even at minimum throttle, Raptor engines produce exhaust velocities of more than 2,000 meters per second. Simulations showed that firing these engines close to the lunar surface could dig out a crater one to two meters deep, undermining the very landing pad the plume interaction system created. And the dust kicked up from that blast, razor-sharp and electrostatically charged lunar regolith could sandblast equipment, coat sensors, infiltrate seals, and pose serious health risks to astronauts. Finally, NASA's strictest requirement is redundancy for human spacecraft. Human spacecraft must have two independent layers of fault tolerance. The legless Starship design did not meet that standard. A single engine failure or nozzle malfunction during the final moments of descent could cause unbalanced thrust, leading to a loss of control. No legs meant no backup support structure, no redundancy, no safety margin. For an uncrewed lander, this risk might be acceptable. For crewed missions, NASA considered it too risky. By late 2022, after multiple reviews, NASA concluded that the legless landing concept simply carried too many unknowns. It was not that the idea lacked brilliance. It just asked astronauts to trust too many unproven assumptions on a world that does not forgive mistakes. By early 2023, SpaceX pivoted to a more traditional approach. They unveiled Option B, a Starship HLS equipped with six titanium landing legs. These legs used retractable self-leveling hydraulic pistons and honeycomb shock absorbers capable of handling slopes up to 15 degrees. Yes, the system added weight and complexity, but it also added stability and redundancy and credibility traits NASA considers non-negotiable for human missions. In the end, the choice came down to a battle between visionary innovation and proven reliability. SpaceX's legless lander represented one of the most daring engineering concepts ever proposed. But the moon rewards caution, not boldness. Physics imposes limits, regardless of ambition. So, what would you choose? the revolutionary legless lander that pushes engineering forward but carries enormous risk, or the heavier, safer, more traditional lander that may not look as futuristic 
but is far more likely to bring astronauts home? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. One thing is certain. SpaceX's radical landing concepts are not gone forever. They are simply waiting for the right era. When humanity begins building permanent lunar bases, laying down landing pads, and constructing local infrastructure, techniques like plume surface interaction and horizontal landing may finally become practical. In the history of spaceflight, no idea truly dies. It just waits for the moment when technology and the environment catch up. If this deep dive into one of SpaceX's boldest proposals captivated you, then be part of what we are building here. We release weekly explorations of cutting-edge space technology, the untold engineering stories behind historic missions, and the innovations that will take us to Mars and beyond. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and join a community that goes beyond the headlines to understand how humanity actually conquers space. Let's reach for the stars together.